Hey guys, it's me again, back for another vlog. Ever since I started making videos about this particular topic, I've been getting a big point of contention of a particular topic that has been brought up many times, both on and off YouTube, when it, when it applies to the engineering field. And obviously, as you can see by the title, the big question is, should you take the FE or the PE exam when you're going through your engineering career. There have been other videos on YouTube and I'm sure there's other sources on the internet that talk more about this topic and give a more clear defined answer, but I figured I would bring more of a casual perspective about it. If I wanted to give you the short answer now as to whether you should take the FE exam, it, unfor it unfortunately is a very general answer and that is yes, no, and it depends. The depends part really focuses more on the PE exam itself, but I figured to start off this video, I figured I should talk about exactly what the FE and the PE exam really is. Obviously one point to make here is that in order if you want to take the PE and get a PE license you have to have taken and passed the FE exam. The FE exam and it's probably changed since I was in school but as of now the PE ex I'm sorry the FE exam is a six hour long test that you take on the computer and it's a closed book test but you're given this NCEES guide full of like formulas and terms that are on it and that on it and that's the only type of reference that you have on the FE exam and it's all done by computer. I think you open like a PDF file and you look through that reference guide and you use that to answer all the questions. There's 110 questions on the FE exam. This has nothing to do with the PE exam yet, but the FE exam has 110 questions, six hours long and you get about a it's ba basically, it, the test itself is, an, is five and a half hours, but you get like a 10 minute introduction and then you get like a 20 minute break some, somewhere in the middle. The FE exam is different for each type of field of engineering that you're going into. There's one for civil, there's one for mechanical, and so on and so forth. And the test itself is broken down into different sections that you have studied throughout your particular engineering field. So if you're like a mechanical engineer like I was, you're gonna see te you're gonna see sections that are broken up into like there's a mass section, a general knowledge section, then there's like a thermodynamics section, and then a materials science based section. It's all divided like that. Now, if you want my honest opinion on if you should take the FE exam or not, my honest opinion is it definitely does not hurt to take the FE exam by any means. In a lot of places, depending on how competitive the region is they kind of require you to have um, taken and passed the FE exam. There's some places that don't specifically try to look through and make sure that you've taken this test, but um, I know for a particular like larger, larger Fortune 500 companies, especially if you're working like in Silicon Valley, like in California, you pretty much need to have taken and passed the FE exam. There's just no way around it. Some smaller companies in the country don't, again, do not require you to really have taken the exam, but a lot of places kind of assume that you've done, that uh, they have assumed that you have taken the test, if that makes any sense. Like, it's practically almost hard to kind of avoid the test, especially if you're going through college in and of itself. The time and locations of when to take the test vary per state, but they offer it twice a year and it costs about, it costs I think like $225 these days to take the test. For the FE exam, it's usually recommended that you take it right at the end of your junior year or like somewhere in the middle of your senior year in college while all the stuff that you've learned through your, your college experience is still clear on your mind. Now guys, I get it. A lot of people are nervous about test taking in general. There's some people that do not have a knack for taking tests and they get nervous and they think like it's an important test. I totally, totally understand that. If for some reason it does scare you, again, there's it's not the end of the world if you don't ever take the exam, I guess you can say. There's still places that'll hire you, but it's really, it's definitely beneficial to take the test. But there's also some good news with it. The pass rate for the FE exam is actually quite high. Um, there's again there's different uh, categories of the FE exam but I don't think any of them the, the score rate changes all the time but I don't think any of them fall below 70 percent and the most common one the one with the most volume is mechanical engineering and I think its pass rate is above 80 percent pretty high pass rates for the FE exam so if you're scared that you're just gonna bomb the test you really have nothing to fear here as long as you study so how long should you study well, I guess it depends on what you do actually study. There are many resources online especially that can help you prepare for the exam. 
I use some resources on YouTube that I used when I was studying for it. They cover all the different sections. At least for me, it was mechanical engineering, so I had to review on things like uh, thermodynamics and um, derivative-based calculus and physics and uh, vibrations and controls and things like that. There are some classes that are independent of college, either online or in real life or in person, that you can actually go to that are just specifically dined designed to prep you for the FE exam. In my particular case in college there was a semester long class entirely designated that you could take it was called the FE prep exam class and I forgot what exactly what it was called but it, stuff like this actually exists especially while you're going through college. If it doesn't I recommend that you try to research some classes that you can actually attend to help prepare you for, for it. If not there's tons of good reading material and stuff online that can definitely help you but you need to start early. Especially if you're somewhat fearful of test taking in general and you feel like your GPA is just somewhat average com coming towards the end of your um, coming towards the end of your college career, you definitely need to start studying early as much as two months in advance, if not more. That being said, I I've heard stories of people who have literally just gone into the test center, never studied, and pass it. That, isn't, that, that, that does not necessarily mean that it's easy, it just depends on what kind of person you are. If you are just a person who's just generally nervous about taking tests, for your own sake you should probably study beforehand. But the good news is, again, that the pass rate for the FE exam is pretty high. Now what about the PE exam? I don't know if I'm necessarily going to upset a lot of people by saying this, but it's almost entirely not necessary to even think about taking the PE exam unless you're working for a specific company that needs you to do it. I personally don't see myself in a position where I'm ever going to be like the head honcho of all the engineering department of a particular company where I'm going to sign off on these huge important documents and I'm going to be liable for everything that goes out the door at that point. I almost kind of don't want that responsibility. That's just my particular preference, but there's a lot of people who want to get that. And obviously the more certifica certifications and stuff you get on your um, resume and stuff, it can help kind of propel your career depending on what kind of, again, what kind of goals you want. It just depends on where you want to go in life and what you exactly want to do as far as your career is concerned. You can, you can, it is, again, it's almost not necessary to ever take the PE exam and be get a professional engineering license. A lot of companies require the FE of license, and some don't. Again, it just depends on your situation, your location, and what you exactly want to do as far as your career is concerned. Now, the structure for the PE exam is quite a bit different. It's actually um, the FE exam was a closed the FE exam was a closed exam, closed book exam that was six hours long. The PE exam is an eight hour long test, and it's open book, and you can bring everything to the test center. I, I've heard stories of people of people who have wheeled in carts of their old textbooks and they brought them with them into the test center to take this test. Literally, like there will be people that, there will be people that will bring all of their textbooks and all of their notes that they took in college and every I mean I've just heard stories like that. Is it completely necessary? I don't really know, honestly, since I've never really made it to that point, but again, I've heard stories of people like that. Unfortunately, the results for the PE exam don't have much of a happier ending as compared to the FE exam. For one, the pass rate is a little bit lower. In some fields, it's, as, it's just as good or even higher, but unfortunately, the pass rate obviously for the PE exam is a, quite a bit, is a little bit lower, as much as 10% lower of the pass rates as the typical FE pass rates are. The NCEES website actually has a call, actually has a page for the PE exam that is different than the FE because they actually split the pass rates into two, two different columns. They have one um, showing the pass rate for the first time test takers and then they have a second column showing the pass rate for the repeat takers. And the pass rate for the repeat takers is abysmal. It's like less than 40% on some of these statistics. It's horrible. I guess it's I guess it's kind of implying that if you are the kind who's going to fail it the first time, chances are you're not going to pass it after that. 
that's kind of what it seems as far as the probability is stacked on this column. It seems kind of morbid, I know, but if you don't pass the PE exam the first time, the chances of you passing it the second time are abysmally low. And I don't know why they decided to categorize that, but it looks a little bit scary, but I don't know. Again, I guess the good part of this is that at least the pass rate is still somewhat decent for the first time. But if you fail it, I don't I don't really know if there's much of a point to try and take it again unless you like study really, really, really hard because the repeat test take pass rate is really low. Structurally it's also like the FE exam where it's uh, submitted two times a year and you have to pay a certain amount to take the test. Um, as far as the time scale of when to take the PE exam, um, usually it's after you've mentored after, during your current job for at least a few years where and where some people may, re before you get like a big promotion, if you ever are going to get like a huge promotion to be like the lead engineer of like the whole department, then yeah, you'll have to go take the PE exam probably. Um, if you're going to get like your master's or doctorates in engineering, that may be a good time to take it after you're coming towards the end of your, like getting your master's degree of to take the PE exam. Um, it doesn't hurt to take it, I guess, but it, like I said earlier, it's almost completely not necessary. And I don't, I don't know if you can really go to like to people who actually would recommend that you do take it. But I remember going through college and hearing all my professors talking about taking the PE exam and like bringing all their test books into the testing center. Like it's not like all of them take have taken it, but I struggle to actually find an actual engineer, at least in the location I'm at, I struggle to find an actual engineer that actually has a PE license and took the test. Like, they're a dime a dozen. The volume rate for the people who actually take the test are only in the thousands, and that's for the entire country. So again, there's not many actual professional engineers with a PE license to their name in general in the country. Anyway, this is just kind of a small video discussing the FE and PE exams because Again, I just, like I said, it's a huge point of contention for a lot of aspiring engineers because it's usually like the first thing they hear about once they start to get further along into their college career. It's just hearing all these stories about taking the FE and the PE exam because it's just something that's ringing in the back of their head as if it's like the end all be all of their college career. All I can assure you is it's, you can still be an engineer and technically not have taken any of these exams. I can, I can actually promise you that. You can still technically be an engineer without having done any of these exams. It's not, and there was a misconception for a lot of people that it was like something they actually did issue to you on your senior year, a test, and you had to pass it to even graduate. That is entirely not true. Um, it's completely optional, but at least for the FE portion, it's pretty highly recommended that you do take it, but it's something to not fear because it has a general high pass rate. So that's just the general message just to send along with this um, video is out of these exams, it's recommended to take the FE and to try to do it towards the end of your college career, and it's something to not initially fear because it has a high pass rate. Um, just some general information, right now it's July 2015. Um, the, op the registration for the October P exam um, closes on, at 3 o'clock p.m. on September 3rd and for the FE exam registration is open all year long so you can go on to the NCEES website and register for that test at any time. The NCEES website in general has a lot of information if you have any types of questions concerning the test. Um, I told you for the FE exam that the one reference they give you is like is the NCES reference guide. You can go onto that website and download a PDF of it and you can study it and try to base all of your studying around what's on that guide because that's the only thing you're going to have on the test. They even have links to YouTube videos to actually show you what the testing environment is going to be like for the FE exam. I'm going to link all of this below down in the description so if you have any questions you can totally click on those links and it will direct you to those to those videos and to, that, and to the website itself so you can do more research about the, the exams themselves. Alright guys that's it for the video. I'm sorry about the weird lighting. I'm staying right in front of the, my window here at home and it's like the only way I can get good lighting for my for my camera. I can only usually record right after work and I have to do it like immediately while the sun's still out so like I open the window so I can get all the light on my face and it, but it looks weird kind of on my shoulder with the sun rays going on it so I apologize about that. Hopefully sometime soon I will make another topic concerning 
anything, I guess you can say. Um, definitely if you, for engineering type videos, the, my general advice videos for those aren't going to end anytime soon, hopefully. I do have a few couple ideas in mind that kind of um, tie in to other stuff I've talked about on my channel um, in, in general, but I plan to keep making more informative videos as much as I can. Um, I'm kind of busy with work, busy with personal life, but hopefully it won't take away from me trying to keep uploading videos at a regular pace. And I'm gonna, I am always I always sound like a broken record whenever I talk about these on my videos, but I try to be better about it. I'm gonna try to be better about it as far as trying to upload videos and hopefully as the summer comes to an end, I work in oil and gas and usually summer's a little bit busier, at least from where I'm at, so hopefully I can have more time as the summer's tired to come into a close as far as trying to make videos. And just, I need to be better, more organized anyway, but I have a plan going forward, I have a plan as far as how I'm going to do it, so I'm pretty op optimistic. Anyway guys, that's it for this video. Um, if you find this interesting, please like, comment, and subscribe, share with your friends, do whatever the hell you want to, watch my other videos please. That'd be great. Um, anyway, I'll just talk to y'all soon and have a good day.